Hello class. In this video, I'll talk about environment in Unit 3D, and in the end, we'll create this uh, punished nature environment. Okay, so let's get started. So first, we'll head over to game object and we'll create a terrain. And um, if you see this uh, globe illumination, um, you can just uncheck this uh, static to turn it off. If you don't see it, that's fine. And go to the setting. By default, the terrain, uh, the width and height should be 1000. If you don't have this number, just uh, type it in. Um, so for this tool, raise and lower terrains, you will be able to uh, sculpt your terrain and you can choose the different brushes. Um, and if you just click on the terrain, you should be able to raise it up. And if you hold on shift, you will be able to lower it down. But you can lower the zero height plan because it's already set as a zero height. Okay, so you could only lower down a terrain you already draw which have a height. And paint texture. Uh, you will be able to you know draw texture on our terrain and for set height you just uh, put a specific number and you just uh, paint and you're going to raise your terrain to that number okay and smooth height so you can use that to smooth the um the terrain you have draw and you can also use a stamp terrain and you can choose a um, a paint and you're going to stamp your your paint on the terrain and you can set a specific height so you're going to stamp your paint to a, a, a specific height um, so before we get started I would set a specific height and uh, for the whole terrain because you remember we have talked about lower the terrain if um, your plan is zero height you cannot lower it down so in some cases if i want to um, dig a hole or uh, i want to build a lake uh, i can't do that because the plan is already zero height and i cannot dig it in right so we'll uh, rise it up and then we'll switch to rise and raise and uh, lower terrain and you know we'll be able to sculpt our terrain so now let's move on to the sculpting part uh, so I'll start with the uh, raise and lower terrain, and you can choose a specific brush. And then you can just gently click on the um, terrain, and you should be able to draw. And uh, it's beneficial to use a drawing tablet. Okay, so we'll continue um, draw these details, and you can you know decrease and increase your brush depends on how much detail you want to get. And also another beneficial thing is I will always create a cube and set the um, create a material folder. And I would uh, create a material and name it red because I am um, going to give it a red color. And then we'll give um, this uh, material to the cube. So we'll set the cube as a red color. And I will change the scale, the height as two meters. Okay. Um, and bring it up. So basically this is a human height. So we can place it in the scene. So we have a scale, uh, scale references. Right. Uh, that way we know how height uh, we should sculpt on the mountains. And then this is the finished terrain. As you can see, um, our character stand in the environment and uh, the scale looks good. So I'll go back to the assets and uh, I'll create a new folder. Um, I'll name it the texture. And then um, go to the texture I provided and import them into your project. Um, and then you can use Control D or Command D to make a duplication, and we'll rename it uh, uh, Grass Normal Map. 
So this is for normal for the bumps on the texture surface. So for the texture type, we'll choose it. Um, we'll choose the normal map and uh, create from grid scale. And you can lower down the bumpness, so you can basically lower down the intensity of the normal map. And you can apply, and it's going to transfer the map to a normal map. And you'll repeat this process to um, create a normal map for the ground texture and uh, the, the screen texture. Right, and then we're going to switch to paint texture, and we're going to um, added the terrain layers so you can create a texture layer so we'll load the grass so basically this texture will be set as the default texture for the whole terrain okay and by select this terrain layer you just created and here we can bring in the normal map and then you can see the effect of the normal map the bump bump on the surface and if you feel it's too much and you can lower down the normal scale uh, to lower down the intensity and uh, you can change the size of the texture if you will, if you want okay and then uh, you can rename this terrain layer and we'll create uh, another terrain layer and we'll uh, you know get the ground texture for it And third terrain layer, and we'll uh, create it for the screen. And also get a normal map for it. Alright, so now we can start to draw the texture on the ground. So we'll select the ground texture um, and we can choose a different brush and um, uh, get the opacity as 100 and lower down the brush size. And we can start to build a road on the map. Okay, if you zoom in, you can see we have drawn another terrain layer on top of the grass one and uh, both of them has a normal map so it has bumps and we'll start to paint a path, a road in the map so our, our character can walk around alright and then we can select our green layer and uh, we can draw some uh, cree and uh, stone texture on the edge of the road. And here we're going to create a new folder and we'll name it uh, models. So we'll drop in our template models. So here we'll bring in the cartridge and you can use the rotation tool to orient it around. And uh, if the places are overlapped, we can you know, use the raise and lower terrain to lower down um, the terrain to dig out our house. And then we can create a new material. And uh, we all will get the diffuse map for the Arbaldo cello, which is just, you know, just for the color. And then get the normal map to the normal map channel. And then we'll apply our material to the house. And then we'll bring our watchtower
So we're going to follow the same procedure to um, lower down the terrain if it overlapped with our watchtower, and I'm going to rotate the watchtower so our character can walk onto it. And we're going to create a material, and we're going to apply the texture maps. Okay, so basically we're going to follow the same procedure and uh, we're going to uh, bring in the wood and get texture on the wood. Okay, so next step we're going to move on to the trees. Um, so here, go to the Unity Asset Store, and uh, you may sign in if you have an account uh, or create a Unity account. And um, I have put a link for these assets, and you just click on Add to Assets, uh, and then go to My Assets, and you know click on Open the Asset in Unity, and you're going to load the asset. You're going to open the Package Manager. Uh, you can also go to the Windows and find the Package Manager. Okay, so select the assets in Package Manager and click on Import. We're going to load everything and we're going to import everything into our project. And import both the grass flower and the conifer uh, the assets. So you should be you should find them here. And then we'll select our terrain and we're going to select the trees, the pin tree. And uh, we're gonna head over to edit trees and add a tree. And for a tree prefab, you can just search uh, conifer, and you're going to load the four um, the tree prefabs we have imported. Okay. And by default, as you can see, the brush is painted a lot of trees, so we can lower down the tree um, the tree density. So you can just uh, draw a few a time. And you can even lower it down more if uh, you know you want more control. So paint this tree across the scene. All right, and. If you get any tree on the road, you can hold on control and click on the tree, and you're going to donate that tree. And uh, here we're going to add another tree, and uh, we're going to add a small conifer, so we can give it some variations. Okay, and we can add the smaller tree to around the house. And also draw it. Uh, to the whole scene. Okay, hold on control and you can delete some trees and as you can see I can't delete these trees because you have to select that specific tree in your tree layer in order to denate that tree. Okay, that one is a taller tree, so we have to select that one and denate it. Okay, so here we'll add the median, uh, the media tree, and we're going to paint the median tree. Basically, just to give some variation in the scene. Okay, for the fourth part, we're going to move on to grass and flowers. 
So click on Paint Detail and Add Detail, and we're going to add a grass texture. And head to the grass flower textures uh, we have downloaded and drop in the grass. And then we can lower down our brush size. And we can start to draw in the scene. Okay, so we're going to draw the grass across the scene so we can basically fill the ground with the grass. And then we can add another grass texture and here we're going to bring in um, our flower, the red flower. And also again, we're going to lower down the brush size so we can get some detail. And remember you have to select that grass layer, uh, that flower layer you just imported in order to paint with that flower. Okay, and then we'll add one more. And here we're going to paint some purple flowers to get some variation on the ground. Okay, next we're going to move on to colliders. So we want our character to be able to collide with the house. So we're going to add a mesh collider to it. And then um, we'll also add a mesh collider to the watchtower. Okay, and then go to the standard assets uh, folder. And under the first person character, you should find FPS control. And you just bring it into the scene and um, press F key to focus on it and make sure you bring it up. Uh, move it above the ground so it will not fall um, onto, under the ground. Okay, and also make sure you turn off the main camera so it doesn't affect your first person controller. Okay, so this is how it looks, and this is what in the yeah uh, what are you going to build in the end? And as you can see, we can um, walk onto the watchtower. We can go through these uh, ladders, and we can climb on it. And then as we are on top of it, uh, we can just observe the surroundings and check if there's an enemy going to attack. You know, later on if we can um, bring in, you know, enemy characters, those kind of stuff, and we can check the environment and see if there's an enemy approaching or not. Okay, so this is what you're going to build in the end.